Well, that was definitely the tale of two halves. Um, really a unique, um, unique first half. Um, not only did I think we lacked uh, physical effort, um, I don't know if I can remember a time here where our mental breakdowns uh, were, were that dramatic. Uh, can't tell you last time we went under a ball screen, uh, their first four threes, we all we went under all of them. And uh, that's not being very tough um, and, and very dialed in or very awake or alert um, to scouting report. And uh, Boo Booey is a first team all league guard in my opinion. And um, you know, even though he's shooting 28% or whatever for the year, uh, you can't leave him open. And uh, you know, we just he just he just cooked us um, and was was tremendous in the uh, in the first half. Um, obviously, we make an adjustment at halftime and uh, a little different lineup. And uh, uh, Boo hit one three on an inbounds play again where we went under. And, um, you know, then it became the sincere Harris show. Uh, on the defensive end, it became uh, a, a TJ Shannon show on the offensive end. I think Terrence had 24 in the second half. But uh, um, all we truly tried to do was spread them out a little bit, uh, drive them, put them in some isolations. Uh, they put their big kid on Ty Rogers. Uh, so we were able to move him around uh, with some screens. And uh, and open up the paint, and uh, you know Terrence was was uh, electric, uh, getting downhill, uh, getting to the foul line. But uh, the game, player of the game, my opinion is, is sincere. Uh, just completely changed changed the night and took uh, elevated or elevated his teammates with that kind of effort. And uh, my my hats off to him. Start with Doug. Coach, another game uh, work. Going small and completely change the game. What would you see where you need to make that make make that change, and why do you think it was effective? Well, Dane went very good. I mean, Dane had a night. Dane had a tough night. I mean, he had a tough night, and uh, um, you know those were you know his three turnovers felt like they were avoidable. Um, just not very sharp. Spinning baseline, dribbling it. We told him both those things you can't do against this team uh, because they rotate and. Uh, uh, and then Coleman was able to play at the level of the screen, and uh, you know all their ball screens and step, you know instead of letting them get so deep and Boo get so deep, uh, and then Coleman could handle the switch if we needed to. So uh, we felt really comfortable with that, and uh, with sincere on the ball that helped, but it um, it created uh, Max is such a great screener for them. Um, it forced them to have to make a decision whether to play him or not play him because we can spread the floor out. And uh, just felt like it was the right thing to do. Uh, Brad was sincere. It looked like there was maybe a couple of these cues in the first half on three pointers either going under or helping off. How, how did you guys get him dialed in in the course of a game? And, and when he's on like that, what, what's that mean? Because sincere is always on now. And, it, and it, I mean, he's, he's going to make a mistake. He's a freshman. And, you know, he, he and Terrence completely botched a. Um, you know, just a just a simple back cut, and um, and they made a three on it. But uh, um, he he takes great great pride in guarding that basketball, and uh, he goes he and Jaden go at it every single day. And um, uh, tonight he elevated his teammates and he elevated us to a level that was uh, pretty doggone high. Uh, Red, they had. 43 throws, made 32 up at Evanston. They only got 12 on the, at the shots at the line tonight. Do you think, did you differently on defense to minimize the foul, or that's just kind of on court? Um, I hope it's growth, because we fouled them a lot up there. I mean, they weren't, they deserved to be called. Um, we have a great crew tonight. Um, anytime you get Brian on a game, it's a league game, we're going to be called. And, but um, yeah, I, I thought that they let us play. And, um, you know, we, we just did a much better job of being in the right place, being at the right time, and, and, and very attentive. Sure. Brandon, you think 
he had this in him, but to get Terrence back, and what did he show you in the second half besides just scoring? Yeah, that was UCLA Terrence. That was that was early season. And, you know, I, I had no idea what to expect. I had no idea pregame if he was going to play. Um, you know, everything in our protocols is about symptoms and reactions to to movement and and activity. And, and he was he was cleared. Um, you know, I, I usually don't start guys that have been out for a week or, or longer. Um, and so he came off the bench, and and uh, but I, I thought his his defense on Chase was every bit as good as his offense. So uh, he's uh, you know he's an he's an all league caliber player, and and uh, he rose to that occasion tonight. We needed every point and and, and every defensive effort. Jerry, you know the TJ was working out with Tim before practice yesterday. What was he able to do? Prior to this game, as far as what you saw from him, it's not very, very little. It's just a, it's a, and, and first of all, we didn't do hardly. What is? I don't even know what today is. The Tuesday, um, we didn't do hardly do anything. Uh, coming off the Saturday Monday, um, we did very little. It was more of film day. We actually just went to the court to walk through, and we shot uh, free throws, and. Um, Terrence had to go through a little more excruciating workout with on his own, um, and and to, to meet the protocol deals. So literally yesterday was kind of the the next step in that deal for him. So we had a, we had a, we had a good solid practice yesterday uh, that he went through. That was it. You said you found out pretty good that Terrence was playing. What was kind of your reaction to him coming back, and what was the process to kind of fold him into the game plan as quick as he did? Well, I knew I was gonna. If he was cleared, I was gonna. And I was, and I, I felt better about the opportunity since he got through yesterday's practice and and, and was symptom free. But you know, then there's shoot around today, and and um, um, so I, I knew I was gonna bring him off the bench, uh, and that was my feel. It was just literally, you know, I was gonna play it by, you know, his conditioning, his activity, his. Um, Success rate, you know, and I felt great because RJ was coming off a, uh, you know, of a, of a great game, and um, so I, I wasn't overly concerned either way. We were just going to kind of play by field. Coach Bowie got a few early in the second half, but then made it a lot harder on, harder on him down the stretch. What what change was made there, and was it a matter of just making him drive the ball and running him off the line? No, I mean, sincere made the. Biggest difference. I mean, um, I think he had 32 with 14 to go, or close to it. Inner sincere, and uh, uh, Jaden gave up three, and and um, uh, we made that change, and uh, he just settled in and just guarded him. And then, you know, playing small, we're able to lift a little bit our our drop coverage, and and then when there was problems, Coleman does an, an elite job of, of of what we call a late switch. And uh, he handled that very, very well. So it made it shooting over six ten, six eleven. So we quit going under him. We keep, you know, we just simply couldn't get a three off. Scott, when Terrence is able to get downhill, attack the basket like he did, what what does that maybe do for your offense as a whole? Well, I think we have a one point four OER in Big Ten play uh, when the ball touches the paint. When it doesn't, I think it's point six. So Terrence is a is a sneaky good facilitator and passer, um, but he's also, you know, that guy who can draw fouls and he's big and strong and and uh, you know he gets that thing to the to, to the rim and that's um, that helps us a lot and uh, he was able able to do that tonight. So, Coach, you know, as you talked about it being a tell two halves tonight, what did the second half of those twenty minutes show you about your ball club? Um, it takes everybody, you know. Tonight wasn't wasn't Bain's night. It wasn't Jane's night. Um, it, it's and, and it can be. Um, you've got to lean on your veterans. We let we, we we were leaning on our veterans, especially on the offensive end. Terrence Shannon, Matthew Meyer, uh, Coleman got some good looks, just did, didn't go down. Uh, but then uh, to be inspired by two freshmen um, 
and you know, sincere. You know, Jaden was really good against Minnesota, and so he played a little more. And then sincere lifts us, and then Ty Rogers is developing into a heck of a college basketball player. And to be inspired by two freshmen on the defense end just raised everybody else's level. So I think it's. Uh, we're, we're becoming deeper. Um, I'd hope to play Luke a little more tonight, um, and probably would have had Matt not got not got going. Uh, but um, again, I guys, I think it's the first time we we're we're healthy since the start of the season, and literally have all parts. Uh, you know, because Terrace has been out for a while now, and and you know Luke coming back, and so I'm, I'm excited about what the growth of this team together having everybody could be. Yeah. Brett, it feels like some of your biggest wins this year, Sincere, now Ty are making some of those differences. What's that set them up for foundation-wise as they grow as players? Well, the hardest thing for freshmen is you got to go through it to get to it. You know, you got to you got to you got to go through the process, and you got to understand that there's there's a ton of ups and downs, and um, it's it's not easy to get to where. Terrence Shannon is, or or Matt is, you know they 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 all went through those, and you've got to go through that, and and to have those two guys on the court at the end of the game, I mean I, I hope that just skyrockets their confidence and their belief, and 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 um, their understanding, and uh, again you got to go through those moments and win some and lose some to be honest to know how to to react in those moments, so. Um, yeah, and then they got great examples of Matt and Terrence, um, and how to how to how to take it to the next level and do it. I mean, Terrence. I mean, Sincere's layup was huge. That was just an instinctive play of, you know, rip driving it and and and, and beating the guy for a layup. Well, yeah, Brad, you mentioned how efficient your offense is when you get the ball in the paint, but on the downside with that tonight, you know, Dane clearly, clearly struggled with the double team. Um, how do you with that book out there on him moving forward? How do you get him to kind of practice? I, we've seen Dan handle it many, many times, and it's it's just be, you know it's just about becoming accustomed to it, discipline, and you know against this team, as it was Nebraska, he was great against Nebraska, and you can't you just can't go baseline, and you know two of his turnovers were dribbling, trying to turn baseline. Those are old habits that he's had, that he's 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 got to get out of, and then you know he likes to throw everything one handed. And, um, those things don't work at the college level. Coach, you've been, you've been pretty good out of timeouts most of the season. Tonight, was that an easy call? Just get the ball to TJ and, and let him let him go? Or? Pretty much. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it's rocket science sometimes, you know? And, and um, you know, we've got a little blur play that we, we like to run. We, we clear a couple guys out. And, and Northwestern gives you middle third of the floor, so they give you the middle of the floor, and, and uh, uh, you know just got Terrence there. We you know we ran a couple, we ran the same play to the other side to Matt, and uh, you know, Matt drew a foul. So um, you know yeah, it's uh, you know that's the one thing that this team can do that I love about our ability is we can play isolation basketball, and when 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 stuff breaks down and stuff breaks down, the further you go. Uh, you got to have some dudes who can can go get one, and um, we have we have multiple guys who can do that. Yeah. On, on their last possession, when when Coleman got the block, is that something where you you feel comfortable with Coleman being able to Absolutely. fly over there or even switch on to him? Absolutely. The, it was it was set up it was set up not to switch. We were trying not to switch, and uh, for very much the purpose of rebounding. But it, it, we we call it emergency switch. And if it gets clipped, then you've got to go, and uh, then everybody's got to crack down from you know from the weak side. So the only thing we didn't want to do was, you know, was 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 foul. And uh, but Coleman made a Coleman's instinct. He made a great read. And uh, but yeah, Gavin, yeah, Brad, what do you just make of the way Chris has really gotten the most out of his roster this year? Chris is a really good coach. I mean, a really really good coach. And. Uh, uh, I love the fact that you know he's gone from really a big team um, that what he's had in the past with Ryan and I'm going to Pete. 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 and uh, um, 
and playing through those guys. And, and now, I mean, it's every night you're going to look down, and, and, and those two guards are going to take close to 40 shots. But everybody has bought into their roles with that team. And Max, I love him. I, he's the ultimate role player. He does exactly what he's supposed to do, and that's screen every time and roll. And then he can and then he can guard. And then you got Ty Berry, who's a you know shooter. Um, I think that uh, Barnheiser's come out of maybe nowhere and turned into an elite player. He's he's making shots. Um, and then Robbie's an athletic six nine forward that you know can do a lot of things. So I, I'm, um, you know, he's he's coach of the year in my opinion. I mean, Chris has done a, done a terrific job and and it should be. Uh, you know, kudos to him, and I think what what they've won five in a row coming in here. So, uh, good team and great guards. Uh, what's it tell you about Sincere when he's out there stomping around and, and kind of like we just see him in those moments sometimes? What do you know is working for him when he's doing that? That's what it should be about. It should be about that energy and passion. I mean, that's just sheer passion for playing the game and competing, and and. You know, it's one of the things that I love when we recruited him. It's just as, it didn't matter if it was 8 o'clock in the morning and playing a pickup game or if it was the last game at night at 9 o'clock and nobody was there. Sincere Harris was Sincere Harris. And I mean, and he was going to, he was going to compete and, and uh, you know, he would, he would try to take his mother's ball, you know, and if, if it was, they were playing one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, it's just who he is. So I, I love his passion. I love his energy. And, and as he continues to grow with the mental part of it, uh, you're going to keep seeing him elevate because he's he's, I mean, he's a pretty nice dunk too. You know, he's pretty electric with, with his athleticism. Derek. Brad, what do you make of the different ends of the spectrum with this team? You've been in some big holes. You've also had some crazy comebacks. What do you make of that? I, I, if I had the answer, I don't. Youth and experience, I mean, I, I, I keep going back to that, Derek. I mean, we're one of the youngest teams in Power Five. Um, um, the, the inconsistency, I, I wish I had the answer for. Um, I don't know if I've seen or had a season where I've had maybe that many that many swings, but I do like the fact that I we've, we've been able to push buttons to find that guy. Where it might be over here, it might be sincere this game, or it might be RJ this game, and it, you know, whatever it is, we've been able to have enough and be able to play guys so they grow, so they can hopefully continue to help us, let us help help us win. What are some of the things, Coach, that you're going to tell the team coming down to the final stretch of the season, especially with Michigan coming? Um, I'll worry about them in a, in a few days. I, they're, they're their own, you know, we, it's really simple for me. And it, it's every day, to, every every day. We're an everyday guy. Tomorrow will be an off day because we need it. And and they won't step foot in the gym. Um, we'll prepare for Ohio State. Uh, they got one. They got a great team. They got a great coach. And it's just it's just try to keep stacking and keep stacking good days and become habit. And um, hopefully, a second half like this can be a springboard. And hopefully, at the first half. Can be a learning lesson, and there's always moments that you continue to grow, and, and that's all we're trying to do is grow. And uh, you know, we've got to find a, 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 a little more balance between the highs and the lows, but that's all we can try to do. All right, thank you, Coach.